to deliver the coat to Johnny. Your brother sure got a good price for that mail, and she's worth it. Remember, Mr. Pierce is downstairs waiting for you. I'll take these two, honey. I'll bet Johnny will be glad to see Mary. That reminds me. Johnny sent us this check for you. Oh. At that rate, the loan will be paid off in another year. <laughs> now, Mrs. Bradley, before your husband died, I told him there was no hurry. That was when you were our neighbor. But I'm not owing the district attorney money any longer than necessary. <laughs> I've been your neighbor longer than I've been district attorney. Mary might need the money for her trip. But I don't. I have money. And when we sell the coal, We'll have enough to cover all our expenses, won't we, Mother? I hope so, dear. San Francisco's a long way, Mary. You better let me ship the coat. Too expensive. Well. You know how badly we need the money. Well, it's all ready, Missy. Well, I'll take good care of your mother while you're gone. Thanks, Barton. Don't worry, Mother. I'll wire you. Good luck, Mary. Give my regards to your brother and tell him to come on back to Kentucky, where he belongs. Thanks, I will. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Miss Mary. Bye. 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 Sleep and whine. He's got a head like a beefsteak, a belly like a hound, and he eats everything that he finds on the ground. Horse, horse, doggone horse, that doggone horse of mine. Chibada, nibada, nibada, nado, bad midi, nado. Chibada, nibada, nibada, nado, bad midi, nado. Chibada, nibada, 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 Badan, 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 Badan,
horse, doggone horse, that doggone horse of mine. All that doggone horse can do is eat and sleep and whine. He's so dumb when he gets on the track, he thinks he's going forward, but he's really going back. Horse, horse, doggone horse, that doggone horse of mine. That doggone, doggone horse of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you getting no clear on that? <laughs> yeah, speaking. Send her right up. Scram, boys, my sister's coming up. Did you ride tomorrow, Mr. Johnny? No, I finished yesterday. Why? Anyway, if it's just the same to you, instead of this yet tip, I'd rather have one on the races tomorrow. <laughs> okay, here's a red hot one, eight ball. Yes, sir, Mr. Johnny. I appreciate that. Yes, sir, I sure does. So long, Johnny. And thanks, thanks, Johnny. So long, fellas. Won't tell. First race. Yes, sir. Oh, oh no, you don't. Come on, spit it out. You lends me four bits apiece, both of you. And then I gives you the tip. Or else... Or else what? I hollers. All right, what's the name of the horse? Won't tell. What? what? I'm glad to see you. I've missed you, too. How's Mom? Oh, she's not so well, Johnny. Oh, why didn't you write and tell me she was sick? Well, she's not exactly sick, but she worries so much. Oh, things will straighten out. Take care of themselves and times get better. Sure they will. Come in. Hello, Harry. Hello, Johnny. Well... I didn't know you went in for all this sort of... This is my sister, Mr. Johnson. Glad to meet you. How do you do? If you don't mind, Johnny. Sure, sis. I've got a proposition to make you. What is it? I've got a string of horses down at Pagona, and I want you to ride for me. Pagona? Well, that's an outlaw track. If I rode there, I'd be suspended for life. Not if you rode under another name. In a week down there, you can make some big money. Sorry, Johnson. You got the wrong boy. Well... If you should change your mind, here's my telephone number. Come on back, sis. Is he gone? Yeah. Who was he? Oh, he owns a string of cheap horses. He wanted me to ride for him under an assumed name. Down we're going to fairgrounds. That's an outlaw track. That's just what he looked like. Yeah, even his horses are ashamed to run for him. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Mr. Johnny, it's awful. It's terrible. I, I can't, I can't talk with Johnny. I can't talk. Hey, listen, Tom, quit sobbing. Now, tell me slowly, just what happened? We was unloading the coat, Mr. Johnny, and he stuck his foot through the side and broke his leg, and he broke it bad. Broke? Are you sure, Tom? Oh, all right. But you'll have to do it. I just couldn't. What is it, Johnny? Tough luck, sis. Deal's off. Colt broke its leg. Broke its leg? What are we going to do? I don't know. Tomorrow's the last day at Ferran. It'll be months before I'll make any money. We'll have to get another loan on the farm. We can't pay another loan. It's all we can do to meet the one we got now. Say, 
Maybe it's a good thing Johnson left his number. You can't do that, Johnny. It might ruin you for life. I know, Mary, but I gotta take the chance. All ready, folks. Step right up. You're just in time. This is the one bright spot on the Pagoda Fairgrounds. Ten cents. It costs a dime. There's no black. Somebody wins. Folks, a dime. Ten cents. she goes and where she stops nobody knows keep your eye on the numbers folks there you are number 70 and nobody on it that's another one for the house my friends hey buddy how about one more roll not me i just lost you never lose my friends you merely pay and play again come on take one more roll who knows this time you may win not as long as you get your foot on that gimmick here take that bacon home to your wife and kids and come back tonight and now you've lost the grocery money. Pardon me, stranger, but do you go to moving pictures? Yes, sir. Then you ought to know I am when you see one. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You didn't win that ham. Why, I'm surprised at you. I'm ashamed of you. I thought you were a sport. Sport? Well, I am, but you... All right, then I'll match you for the ham. Oh, all right. You're on. Call it. Hey. You lose. Uh, what's a good horse to play in the third? Lunch hour. Twelve to one. Who's that guy? Marty Marion, newspaper man. Swell fella. Never picked a horse in his life. I'll see you later, Jack. Okay. Hot dog. Cup of coffee and a hot dog smothered in onions. Hold the onions. a little hot dog with my mustard. A little salt. And now some pepper. Pepper, 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 pepper. You may fire when ready, Gregory. Hush! Well, things seem to have gone to the dogs around here. Garcon, another hot dog. This time with a leash. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, that's all right, lady. It might have bit me. Man's best friend is a dog. <laughs> you want to get a little bet down on this race? No, not this one. But I can give you the winner. Marty. Lady, this is all that's left of four sure winners. But this filly has class. Yes, and pretty blue eyes. Oh, I'll bet you tell that to all the race horses. Yeah.
win. Maybe you've got all the sense. Pick me another one. What's your system? The best system in the world. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Horses mix. So do I. That's the name of the horse, Billy. <laughs> well, it's not a bad idea. Now you stay here, I'll go over and place a bet, and I'll be right back. You sure picked a winner in this kid Barnsdale. He just put over another. And boy, do we clean up. What do you mean, we? Well, you're not watching, are you? Ah, call it whatever you like. I don't owe you anything, do I? Well, how are you going to laugh this off? Just like this. Listen, Johnson. When you play with fire, you get burnt. Get out. Okay, I'll go. But you know what happens to watchers like you? Ah, uh, beat it. Well, I'm all finished. Two more winners today. That's good. Got my money ready? Money? What money? Oh, all of it. Nickels, dimes, and everything. Listen, youngster. You've got no money coming. You're Johnny Bradley, riding on an outlaw track. Get me? Yeah, but our agreement. What you think you've got coming is just what I'm going to charge you to keep my mouth shut. Now, scram. I'm busy. Hey, you can't cheat me out of my wages, you crook. Hey, who are you talking to? Get out before I throw you out. Tribune. What's happened here? Looks like the kid bumped off Johnson. I didn't do it honest. Shut up. You mind if I talk to him? All right, but don't touch anything. I didn't do it, Wait mister. Tell me the truth. Did you have anything to do with this? No, I didn't. I was in here having an argument with him, and all of a sudden I heard a shot, and he fell. Where'd the gun come from? I don't know. I just found it laying on the floor. I picked it up, and the cops came in. You keep quiet. Don't admit anything, and I'll see what I can do. Anything else, miss? No, thank you. I'm waiting for my brother. All right, move on. Must be that kid Barnsdale. Looks like him. Hi, Johnny. Hello. Cigarette? No, thanks. I never use them. Oh, that's right. I forgot. So you let the district attorney talk you into pleading guilty of manslaughter. You didn't shoot him. Why didn't you demand a trial? Oh, let me alone. You know, I know the warden up at the big house. Maybe I could help you out if you'd let me. I don't want any help. Whether you want any or not, I'll be seeing you. Oh, Johnny. Oh, keep your chin up, sis. You know I didn't do it. Two years in prison. What'll I ever tell Mother? That I've gone to South America to ride. Listen, I pleaded guilty to manslaughter because I knew my real name would come out if I stood trial and I'm going to prison as Johnny Barnsdale. Johnny Bradley will be home from South America in two years. I'll never be able to convince Mother. You must. Here. I'm in Panama right now. This is my first letter. 
I'll send them to you and you read them to Mother. And if you don't get any, pretend to read one. I'll write as often as I can. Mom and sis, just a few lines to let you know that I am feeling fine, working steady, and if I were not so homesick to see you all, I would certainly like this job. The man I am working for has a big farm, but he is not like good old Cloverdale. I'm counting the weeks until I see you all again. Love, Johnny. But doesn't he say when he's coming home? No, Mother. I followed your hunch on that crooked race gang until Johnson was bumped off. Why didn't you get a statement from the kid that did it? You're a fine reporter. If you weren't the son of the boss, I'd fire you. That kid didn't do that, Bill. He's just taking the rap for someone else, I'm sure of it. Well, you keep a line on him. Follow him up to the big house. Win his confidence. Make him talk. Everybody out! Inspection! <laughs> Hello, Marty. Hello, Johnny. Just dropped up to wish you good luck on your anniversary. Anniversary? Sure. One year today. Oh, yeah, and one more year to go. Well, if you hadn't confessed, I'd have had an easier time with the governor. The governor? You didn't... Yes, I did. The prison board has granted you a pardon to take effect within two months. Oh, Marty, gee, that was swell. Oh, just take it easy, kid. Oh, two months. <laughs> I can do that stand on my hands. Be careful, they don't give you six more to put you back on your feet. <coughs> Hello, Warden. Hello, Marty. Still trying to get your little friend away from me? That's just why I'm here. I've convinced the governor he's no more guilty of that crime than I am. <laughs> Well, you were on the spot at that. Why don't you confess if your conscience bothers you? Warden, do me a favor. What do you want now? Make Johnny a trustee till his time's up. Oh, come on, do it for me. Be a good egg. No, sir. That's the farm secret. You're going to win the Kentucky Derby for us, aren't you, darling? Take him in, Jig. The Derby? Yes, Barton. I'm going to enter Blue Streak in the Derby. But how are you going to do that, Mary? You haven't got the entrance fee. Barton, you know our financial conditions. Selling Blue Streak would not begin to pay off our obligations. But if he could win the Derby, it would put us on our feet again. Win the Derby? Why, Mary, what jockey would take a chance with his reputation on an untried horse? Johnny. But Johnny's in South America. He was in South America. You mean he's here? No, but he will be. Otherwise, I'd never enter Blue Streak. Well, uh, what if he doesn't win? That's a question of sink or swim. I'm willing to gamble everything on Blue Streak to win. You get me the loan and I'll put up all we own for security. Well, if you're willing to do that, Millie is a matter of form, of course. I, uh, I can get you the loan. Listen, Marion, there's only one way to handle this thing. When you find guns, someone put them there. 
What are you going to do about Suspend it? Suspend all pardons and privileges. Get me King. King? Issue order at supper to suspend all pardons and privileges until I can find out who hid the guns in the laundry basket. How about Johnny? He'll have to take it with the rest. Why, well, you can't do that. Well, you know that kid didn't have anything to do with it. Certainly I do. But pardons and privileges will mean so much to some one of them, and maybe Johnny will talk. No, not Johnny. Well, that kid's in here now because he wouldn't talk. But this is going to be tough on him. I don't think you should include him. I'm sorry, Marion, but there are going to be no exceptions. You don't know, and I don't know. I've got to find out, and this is the only way. Why don't you have a talk with the kid? If he will tell you anything, that'll be different. I'll talk with him. I know I won't get anywhere. Get me King. King? I've got some bad news for you. As your car won the handicap. <laughs> Sugar, you simp, and he paid 15 to 1. <laughs> well, suppose nobody talks. Then the order will stand for at least a month. A month? Mm -hmm. Oh, but I've got to be out of here in 10 days. Why 10 days? The rent's paid. Yeah, but I just got to be out of here in 10 days. I just got the flash. Who broke out? Your little pet, Johnny Barnsdale. Barnsdale? What? Why, why, that's crazy. Now, the governor just commuted his sentence. He could have walked out of here in two months, a free man. Well, he went over the wall. That was a bright idea of yours, making him a trustee. If he's caught, it'll cost him plenty. In the meantime, it'll cost me plenty. They've been gunning for me for years, and this is the big chance to get me. I was a fool to listen to you. Yeah? All right, I'll go and look. You stay here. I've got something more to say to you. Uh, San Francisco, 34622. Yes, hurry, please. Oh, g give me the desk. Yeah, Marty Marion. Desk? Johnny Bonzel went over the wall. Yeah, would have been free on a commuted sentence. In for manslaughter, yeah. Now look up the morgue on him. Uh, Pagona Fair case. That's right. Stay there until you find out if they pick up in time for the 9 o'clock. Look in your date book and tell me what big events come off in the next 10 days. Now, what's that? When's the derby? Just 10 days? Okay, sign off. Thanks very much. Warden, I've got a hunch. So have I. I've got a hunch this prison break's going to cost me my job. Oh, I'm serious, Warden. I got you into this mess, and I'm going to get you out. How? Make me a deputy, and I'll bring Johnny back here in less than two weeks. You've gotten me into enough trouble already without getting me into any more. Oh, now listen. You're the man on the spot right now. If I find Johnny, 
You get all the credit. You'll have a newspaper behind you and a word or two right in the governor's ear. Oh, I never made you a promise in my life that I didn't keep. Besides, this is a personal thing with me after all I've done for that kid. Did you have anything to do with Johnny's escape? I certainly did not, but I think I know where I can find him. If you were anyone else, I'd kick you out of my office. I'm going to take one more gamble. Come on. I'm going to make you a deputy. Extra, Barnard breaks dead. Extra, Dr. Serving Curve from Esler, who goes over the wall. Paper Nestor. Dr. Serving Curve from Esler, who goes over the wall. Neva Parole. Paper Extra. Barnard Escape Extra. Extra, Bells and Breaks and Bones and Turps Warden. Paper here. Extra. Country calling for playing kind of... St. Bernard, Collie, Bull, Pup, Fox Terrier, with or without a leash. What? What are you doing here? Lady, I've looked for you in every hot dog stand between here and San Francisco. I know I find you sometime, but why here? I live here. Oh. Mighty pretty place you've got here. This your old Kentucky home? No. This is Tom's cabin. I get it. I live down at Cloverdale. Cloverdale? Why, uh, I'm going right near there. Where are you going? Churchill Downs, near Louisville. Down to the Derby? Well, yes, and uh, then again, no. Is it your usual hot dog mess? No, just a friend from San Francisco. Oh. Thanks for the friend. Make mine a hot dog, too. Yes, a collie. You know, that day I left you at the racetrack, I intended to come back. Oh, they never come back. Well, believe it or not, I intended to, honestly. I honestly hoped you would. Now that I'm here, what about tonight? Oh, tonight's the night of nights around here. Traditional costume ball before Derby Day. But well, couldn't you manage an invitation for me? Well, if you'd lived in Kentucky for years and years, or were an honorary colonel on the governor's staff, perhaps. It's a snobbish affair, really. I get it, I get it. The hot dogs are registered at the kennel club. <laughs> well, if I do manage to get in, will you save me some dancing? If you get in, I'll save all of them for you. I'll get in if I have to come as a burglar. Oh, you're going to steal some dances. That's petty last night. I'm after something more important. Horse, dog on horse, dog on horse. Well, she's five feet two, I blue, and has a laugh that tinkles. And I think her name's Mary. Just like your father. I don't suppose you know her last name. No, do you? Well, Kentucky is filled with fast horses and beautiful women. And I reckon from the description you've given, it just about fits Mary Bradley. Tell me about it, Colonel Seymour. The Bradleys have owned Cloverdale for several generations. They breed and train fast horses. Mary has a cold head that could win the Derby once she broke herself. You mean actually had a hand in the training? Yeah. Her father's dead. Mary, the mother, lived there. Mary's managed the farm ever since uh, her brother went to South America to ride. He's a jockey? Yeah, and one of the best. I never could understand why Johnny went to South America when he was having such fine success on our own tracks. Johnny? Johnny Bradley? Didn't he ride out on the West Coast? Yeah, that was before he left this country. Let's see. Well, that was a year ago. Well, I guess I'm about ready. How do I look? Like General Grant? I mean, Lee, sir. <laughs> well, a little boat. <laughs> Mary is a mighty sweet girl.
Colonel Martin Marion of the San Francisco Marions would like the pleasure of your company in the garden. So Colonel Marion isn't dancing tonight. Well, seems as how the old Colonel has discovered a very beautiful moon in the garden. Would you care to say it? I'd love to. And I knew that if we danced, Someone would cut in on us and take you away from me before we had circled the floor. Would that have been so tragic? Very. Well, looks as though I'll have to sit in the rumble seat. Do. Thank you. So you didn't come as a burglar after all? Well, I practically forced Colonel Seymour into getting me an invitation just so I could be with you. Are you going to continue your career of crime? Well, that all depends. You see, I'm a sort of a sentimental burglar. Well, just look at that moon. Oh, you came to steal the moon. I told you it would be something important. What is it? I'm going to steal a kiss. If you do, I'll scream for help. I don't need any help. Don't look now, but that man's here again. Well, why don't you come out to Cloverdale tomorrow and watch Blue Streak have his work out? Thank you. That's an invitation I've been hoping to get. Do come early. I will, thank you. Oh, Mr. Marion, this is Mr. Pierce. Uh, we've met. I see you only manhunt in the daytime. I believe this was to be our dance. You'll excuse me. I asked to drop in, Colonel, because I'm interested in the young man you're entertaining. Martin Marion? Yes, I believe that's his name. Some sort of a police officer, isn't he? <laughs> now, that certainly is a funny joke. If Marty is a police officer, I certainly didn't know it. He's a newspaper man, son of my old friend J.D. Marion, one of the biggest, most influential newspaper men in the West. I thought there might have been some mistake about the information I had. Marty is a mighty fine boy, one of the best. He certainly has taken quite a liking to Mayor Bradley. They'd make a fine match, both blooded stock. Thanks for dropping in, Colonel. Well, don't mention it. Give me long distance. Get me Warden Carlson to California State Prison. Yes. Call me back. The district attorney's office. Yes, this is Carlson. This is the district attorney at Cloverdale, Kentucky speaking. There's a man down here by the name of Marty Marion who claims to represent you. Is he authentic? He is. Yes. Well, just a moment. Escape convicts? Description? Five feet, 108 pounds, light complexion, was a jockey. Name? Johnny Barnsdale. Yes, I think I know him can probably pick him up for you in a day or so. No, Marion hasn't cooperated with us at all. Been having too good a time, I guess. Certainly. Well, thanks very much. Goodbye. Oh, come in, Mary. Thank you. Here's the note, and sign right there. And there's the check. Thank you, Barton. Not at all, it's a pleasure. Oh, Mary. What is it? Have you heard what's happened to your brother, Johnny? 
Why, no. Well, I don't know how to tell you this, but he escaped after they held up his pardon. But, Barton, how did you know he was in prison? I know all about his prison record. Just a few minutes before you came in, I was talking with a warden at the California State Prison. Johnny escaped last week. I don't believe it. He was granted a pardon. I don't know the details. But why don't you uh, ask this so-called friend of yours, this Marion? The warden sent him down here to catch Johnny and bring him back to prison. That's why he's been hanging around you. And that's why he was at Cloverdale this morning. Marty? Using me to get Johnny? Oh, now, don't worry, dear. We've been friends too long to let an outsider get the best of us. If Johnny appears, hide him from this fellow Marion, and then tell me where he is. But Barton... Now, just do as I say, and everything will be all right. And keep smiling. I will, Barton. <laughs> Good. Curly, get this. Get the word out that Johnny Bradley has come home to ride Blue Streak. That'll send the odds down on Blue Streak and up on my horse. We'll make a cleanup. No, of course not. He won't ride him. I'll see to that. But you get the word out that he will. Yes. You know. Oh, Miss Faye! What Miss is Faye? it, Tom? Johnny! Johnny! Johnny. See, he's in the barn. Johnny! Oh, hello, sis. Oh, Johnny, why did you do it? Do what? Escape. Oh. Well, I came home to ride Blue Streak. We've got to win the Derby. Oh, I know, but you'll be caught and sent back to prison for years. Yeah, but I had to take that chance. After the Derby, it don't matter. I know, but there's already a man here from the prison looking for you. Who? He calls himself Marty Marion. Marty Marion? Yes. Why, he's no officer. He's a reporter and my best pal. <laughs> Barton Pierce told me that the warden had sent Marion out here to take you back. I'm going back right after the race. Now, you sent Tom out with some clean clothes and something to eat. And in the meanwhile, don't tell anyone that I'm here. Pierce or Marion either. I get you, Chief. We're going to clean up on this race. My horse can be anything on the track but Blue Street. And I'll see that you clean up on the publicity. That's swell. With another election coming up. Bradley. I had to see you. Mother, Mr. Marion, a friend of Johnny's. Any friend of Johnny's is always welcome at our house. Won't you be seated? Thank you, I will. He's watched Johnny ride in many of his important races, haven't you, Mr. Marion? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. You knew Johnny was going to be here to ride Blue Streak in the Derby. Well, I, I... suppose you did or he wouldn't have come. But he hasn't arrived yet. Yes, I knew. I thought I was going to be able to stay and watch Johnny ride in the big race, but my papers recalled me and I'm leaving tonight. I just called to wish Johnny the best of luck. 
We'll tell him, Mr. Marion. Have you seen him recently? Why, of course he... Oh, yes. Down in South America, I suppose. Well, yes, that... Oh, why, of course, South America. Did he look as though his health was good? Well, I, I think you'll find Johnny in splendid health, Mrs. Bradley. Mother Johnny will soon be here to tell us all about himself. Well, well I must hurry. I want to wish the Cloverdale Farms the best of luck. Goodbye, Mrs. Goodbye. Bradley. Thanks for calling. I wish you could stay. I'll see Mr. Marion to the gate. Goodbye. Thank you for what you spared, Mother. I did tell her the truth. I have seen Johnny ride. Not in South America, of course. I am leaving now. But I thought you... You tell Johnny I'll be back to see him. After the race. And take him back? There's nothing else I can do. Oh, he'll understand that. Goodbye. Good luck. Goodbye. to witness the great American turf classic, the day of days, the race of races, on the track of tracks. The yearly running of this world-famous racing event is bigger than ever this year. 16 entries, the most promising and imposing list of horses, owners, and jockeys ever assembled, even at Churchill Downs. The crowd is enormous, the weather is clear, the track fast, and it's an ideal day for the Derby. The next race, ladies and gentlemen, is the race of the century. A purse of 100,000, 20,000 added, and the Kentucky Gold Plate, a king's ransom for the sport of kings. Everything's all set, even if they get another boy for Blue Street after we grab Johnny. The other boys will block him off. I'm going to win this race. Look, the deputy. Well, my money's good on Blue Street. Oh, have you seen Mary or Johnny? I was out to Cloverdale, but they had left. We're looking for them ourselves. I just got a telegram from the warden. Johnny's innocent. The guilty man has confessed. How is that for good news for the Bradley family? Johnny's a free man. Not yet. Oh, I realize you have to go back and there'll be a lot of red tape, but... As far as we're concerned, that telegram may be just a fake. That's right. Oh, I know. I've got it right here. I... Oh. You've tried to make them believe you were a friend. Well? Listen, smart guy, what are you going to do about it? Oh, I don't know. Come down to see Johnny Wynn. 
That's right, Colonel. And he is going to win. Well, you'll have to excuse me. I'm going to place a little bet. That's the trouble, Colonel. Always betting. You remember John used to say that betting is gambling? Oh, Martha. Here, Mother, take this $10 and buy yourself a box seat. I'm going down to see Johnny a minute. No. Well, Martha, I'm going to back my judgment. <coughs> Colonel, I'm going to back mine, too. Put that $10 on Blue Street. For me. For Martha. I'll put it on the nose. Well, the tail will come in, too. <laughs> attention, folks, attention. Last minute corrections. Scratch mosquito bite. Number six, overweights. Number 14, big shot, five pounds. Number 16, anchor, one pound. Number 17, one long hop, two pounds. <laughs> hmm, those jockeys are just little boys. I thank you, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Another correction, Jockey Small will ride Big Annie, number 19. What's the matter, sis? Is anybody wise? No, Johnny, but there's so much riding on this race. Oh, if I can get on that track without being recognized, nobody will catch us. Get ready, boy. Well, good luck, Johnny. Just the boys is now an odds on favorite. Kentucky Blue Street, the hope of the Cloverdale stable, has gone from 50 to 1 to 5 to 1 since the announcement that Johnny Bradley will ride. Epilogue is now 3 to 1. Baby Grand, 4 to 1. Bad Boy, the Barton Pierce entry, owned by the local popular district attorney, is being heavily bet on in the ring. Post position, Plenty Sugar, number 1. Rider J. Girondi, owner W. R. Alger. Lady Voice, number 2. Rider Steve Donahue, owner F. M. Cole. Time out, number three, rider Buster Brody, owner Mrs. F.W. Carrick. Kentucky Blue Streak, number four, rider Johnny Bradley, owner Miss Mary Bradley. Maddie, number five, rider Laverne Feeder, owner Pete Bostock. Head on, number seven, rider Bruce Albert, owner Bradley Sides. number eight, rider Honey Whitman, owner Bradley Schwartz. Bad Boy, number nine, rider Spex Crawford, owner Barton Pierce. I Laughter, number 10, rider Johnny Callahan, owner John Whitty. Royal Knight, number 11, rider Georgie Fields, owner North Star Stables. Broom Handle, number 12, rider Bert Cucci, owner Green Tree Stables. Top of the World, number 13, rider Walter Robbins, owner Colonel A.B. Dangerfield. Big Shot, number 14, rider Harry Stutz, owner Whitney Payne. One Long Hop, number 15, rider Earl Sand, owner H.P. Belmont. Big Annie, number 16, rider Eddie Small, owner Audley Farms. Mother, why aren't you in the box? I wanted to be close to Johnny. I'm going to disqualify Bradley. And I want you to come along. I'll be right down. Horses are nearing the starting gates. One long hop steps through, and Plenty Sugar is acting badly. They're all lined up now. They're off. They go all together. This boys are drawing out. High laughter. Top of the world. Blue streak. It's a hard ride. High laughter. Two links. Top of the world. A link. That's just the boys. Bad boy. Blue streak and Royal Knight are clutch. Pass the judges' stand for the first time. Coming to the first turn, Blue Streak is coming up on Bad Boy. He's, he's passing. He's by him. Rounding the turn. Out after Link. Top of the world. Just the boys. Blue Streak. Bad Boy. Royal Knight. One long hop. And Big Annie Trail. And where do you think you're going? I'm going to disqualify a convict and send him back to Stan Folsom, the job you were sent out to do. Maybe you're right. Officer. Help me with this drunk. He's trying to get up into the judges' stand. Yeah, can you beat it? I saw him try to hit you. Careful, he's got a knife. Turning to the back stretch, Plenty Sugar goes to the front. <laughs> Ladies, Joyce passes Plenty Sugar. Blue Streak closes the gap. Blue Streak is third. Bad Boy is coming up strong on the outside. In the back stretch, it's Ladies' Choice, Plenty Sugar, Bad Boy, and Blue Streak. Blue Streak is coming up again. Blue Streak and Bad Boy are neck and neck. Bad Boy is hard ridden, coming up on Blue Streak. He passes. Blue Streak is coming up again. Oh, boy, what a race. Blue 
Patrick passes bad boy. He passes head on. He passes ladies' choice. They're all bunched out in front. Take them away. Hey, that guy looks something like our district attorney. Folks, he is. At the voters, that's bad boy, two links. Time out, half a link. Blue streak to head. Bloody sugar a link. Head on a neck. Augusta, half a link. High laughter, half a link. And Big Annie Trail. Head on. He's catching plenty of sugar. No, not yet. Sugar's going out. Bradley rates his horse. The pace is too hot. They'll never catch sugar if he lasts. But he can't last. Brad is a great judge of pace. Sugar is fading. It looks like a two-horse race. It's Sugar a link coming into the stretch turn. It's plenty of sugar on top. Blue streak a link. Bad boy half a link. Time out a link. High laughter. Top of the world. Just a boy. One long hop. Maddie. Head on. Augusta. Royal Knight. What a rider. Oh, I'm so happy. Wait till I see Johnny. What a rider. You know, I thought Pierce's horse had a chance for a moment, but now with Johnny up on Blue Street. You won't take him back, will you? Take him back? I'm a surprise to you. Read that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tear up your mutual tickets, folks, until the result of the sixth race has been made official. came in too. <laughs> hey, Moon Street, why you named her right, sis? She's faster than her mother. But not as fast as yours. Why, mother, where did you get that? On the north, children. On the north. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go back with you now. A little present from your future brother-in-law. <laughs> 